that. And I know MDVA is kind of goonish, so maybe I'm a little bit of a immersed in the culture myself. So, you know, what can you say? <laughs> Welcome. One of us. One of us. <laughs> one of us. So, speaking of one of us, we got two of Maryland's finest here, Dingus Joe versus the recently unsponsored Seagull Joe's Demise Drop their Smash players. If y'all looking to pick up some good players. Yeah, and as you can see, he is the favorite to win tonight. One of the, top, I believe, top PR player here tonight, of course. But, of course, we got Dingus, on the other hand, that tried and true game and watch that funky man himself this has been a matchup that he struggled with a lot like it just if joe excuse me if seagull gets yeah, a yeah, lead okay. they're both yeah, joe. yeah 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 <laughs> the battle of the joes if seagull gets a lead dingus really struggles to get in there's just nothing the game watch has that like can beat palatinus options all joe needs to do is just just jump forward air jump forward air jump back air space them properly and dingus is gonna have a heck of a time getting it but if you can keep the percentages even just hit him with something wild and get that early stock, it kind of turns around. Yeah, and that kind of seems to be the name of the game for Dingus right now, having a good amount of percentage on Seagull stock, but again, it is somehow hard to get in. Ooh, the Buckets. nice flavorful bucket coming out. Of course, he has that on lock, but if you jump a little bit too uneasy, you're going to get snuffed out. Platform canceled by Seagull, just getting to corner, trying to get away from Dingus's waiting arms. You know he's trying to get something to get that bucket to connect, but just Seagull not having any of it, tapping his shield appropriately, interrupting these options with that amazingly fast forward air. Yeah, he seems to have his eyes on the prize, just barely missing that bucket. Good on Seagull for that awareness. And look at that forward air. Cuts through the bomb as well as Dingus's attempt at a hitbox there. Hey, uh, them heals. They nice. I don't know. How many inch heals are those? Well, they're not high enough, apparently. <laughs> high enough to send you all the way to the blast zone and back. Yep, that bomb will connect, giving Dingus a, I don't want to say new lease on life here. He is down by about 100%, but yes. I mean, if we've seen anybody be able to make this comeback, it's Dingus Joe with a nine in the back pocket. Yeah, he has gotten nines tonight. He's gotten nines and doubles on me. He's gotten nines in bracket earlier tonight. Uh, so I uh, would not be surprised if Lady Luck is on his side. But of course, uh, Lady Luck might be hard against a goddess herself. And then the back air again. Yes. You cannot land with Bomb in this matchup. That back air is invulnerable. Hitbox right there will challenge it, beat it, and beat you for throwing something out. Yeah, and I know I've talked to Dingus before, and he has kind of... Oh, no, that was... Wait, no, that was the nine you needed, not then. Uh, Time to reload, Dingus. Put another yeah. one in the clip. Yeah, put, a, put one in the cylinder and uh, let that thing roll. So I, it used to work like this, that you couldn't get the last two numbers that you hit. They took that away in Smash... Four? I don't know if it's back in ultimate. I think it's last one. I okay. Believe. I've heard it's the last one. I could be wrong, but that's why you see sometimes they just throw out a random one. And if it's not nine, got a one in eight chance, baby. Yeah, it used to be that you couldn't get the last two, so Game Watchers would like preload it. They do two and then do it again. Do we just see parry, parry into parry? Yep. Two dinguses, uh, two parry, from, two dinguses, two parries from Dingus and one parry from Seagull. Trading blind back. Calling and forth. Seagull Joe a dingus. That's so rude. It's the <laughs> it's the powers of Joe's. I'm telling you, these Joes have something in their bloodline. Did that, you know uh, what they're related to? Yes, like some kind of distant something. cousin? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Give me give me secrets to this bloodline. I want to get in. Do you guys have a you guys have like a hit up ancestry.com. I'm yeah. third cousin. Invite me for the Smash Fest. Yeah, Teach please. me your ways. Teach me your ways. Do you guys have a cousin that's single? Like <laughs> I wanna get give me something so my offspring can know how to play weird niche characters and goddesses correctly. And now Dingus is just kind of throwing out options here. He's, he's really relegated to having to fish for this kill because he doesn't yes. have anything that's going to connect. Like, neutral air fastball into tilts will work, but you really don't want to be jumping into Palo with neutral air. She can just outspace that for free. Yeah, before the parries happen, I was going to mention how Dingus has talked about uh, some of the kill options are pretty hard to get on Game & Watch, especially depending on someone as tight, as tight uh, that runs a tight a ship as Seagull. So sometimes it's just hard to get that at 163% and you're just going to snap yourself out instead. Yep, that grab range is nothing to mess with. They really did nerf grabs, particularly standing grabs, for a lot of characters in this game. Palo is the only one that maintains a consistently large and disjointed hitbox. Yeah. This character's pivot grab reminds me of Smash 4 Bowser. It yeah. is silly. She has teleport on her uppy and she has teleport on her grab. So mm -hmm. hey, melee Marth, eat your heart out. <laughs> Yeah, real talk. I've been like pivot grabbed from like three character lengths away <laughs> before by, by Seagull's Palu. It is nasty. And Seagull Joe playing a bit defensively there when he has the lead. You know he is looking for you to drift ever so slowly into his character's loving arms. Yeah, sometimes uh, you got to let your opponents do the work for you, you know? Give, give them the noose and let them hang it themselves before you do the dirty trick. Yes, but, I mean, sir. Already out the gate, 35 percentage on board. And now Seagull Joe doesn't have to go in. <laughs> that really is how it goes. It, I feel like 
the first 60 seconds of the match typically decides it because it just a lot if you can go ahead and get Seagull in a big deficit early on he just cannot play as defensively and methodically as he usually does and when that happens like you have openings to actually fight him right now he's just not going to give you anything you're yeah. going to have to earn it by mixing him up and it's difficult against Joe and you might need a nine as well unfortunately five won't cut it yeah now he's out of the percent yeah, yeah. I mean, we saw it earlier tonight. Dingus to get those crazy grab combos that lead into a hammer, but uh, very situational. But sometimes high risk, high reward pays off. Oh, nice! Manages to get rid of that up smash that Seagull was thinking about. Very good aggressive option right there. <laughs> just double up smash. If it don't work once, do it again. Let him know. Yeah. And then sometimes you just got to up air and return. Hey, let me just uh, send you high into the sky. That's what? something that I've noticed Ding is doing a lot better in this game, is that he's covering any kind of attempt at a teleport cancel by tossing a lingering hitbox at the edge. That's very, very intelligent there. That just takes away such a strong mobility option for Paolo. Yeah, and hopefully he can put it more into practice, because right now he is struggling to find himself in an advantage situation. Yeah, the wall is up, and Ding is, is banging his head against it futilely. Yeah, unfortunately, he might be banging his head against the blast zone if this keeps up, because right now he's in disadvantage. He is at ledge, and he's getting cornered bit by bit. Like, he got the cross-up, but then he had to up-be out of it, otherwise he was going to get punished, and then go punished for up-being. It's just so frustrating here when you your reliable options that your character's based around just do not work. In this matchup, I really feel like a lot of Game Watches joint just do not work. Yeah, it might be unfortunate. Can Chef get himself anything at the ledge? Unfortunately not. He was looking for that Chef to forward tilt combo to boost him up a little bit. Yeah, but uh, no dice, unfortunately. Even Chef is one of those tools that, in this matchup, it's minimized for G-dubs. Like, he normally, Game Watch just does it for free, and then what do you do about it? For Palu, she actually has options that beats it, like invulnerable back airs. Yeah, and so this is certainly a struggle for Dingus, because right now he is certainly lapped, but that turtle does the trick. That's... Just clipping Seagull enough to go ahead and get that hit. Yeah, that jaw is mighty powerful on that turtle, but uh, still, you got a long percentage to come back from Dingus. Nice parry, though. Remember, I saw a Twitter thread recently that was like, how do you punish Palu back air? Just parry it. And y you say that. Easter said than done, but hey, if yeah, exactly. it works. <laughs> it's like that that does that is true, it does work, but, but uh I mean, hey, how do how do I not get hit? Just parry and knock hey, just avoid hitboxes and parry anything that touches your shield. Yeah, that's one of those like just don't get hit things. It's like, yeah, parrying is good. I get a five frame window and if I mess it up, or if they like read that I'm gonna drop shield and they just back me really late, then uh, I'm gonna get hit. I'm gonna die. Let's see though, now down another stock. What is Dingus going to do? Trying to find something to trap Seagull on ledge, give him something nice, but fortunately not. Dash grab not quite going to work out. Gives Dingus a throw opportunity of his own, but sets up Chef instead of pursuing off stage. Seagull just kind of sits there and looks at it for a minute. Yeah, just kind of, hey, what are you doing there, buddy? That's kind of the Dingus special. Just tap your shield and then immediately forward tilt. Forward tilt comes out so fast. Yeah, that chair hurts. He is taming lions with that bad boy. Oh, he, he grabs a, get a, gets a full bucket from that explosive flame, though. That might be able to do a lot of damage for himself if he gets it off. I think that because it's a multi-hit move and he didn't get the strong hitbox of it, it'll just kill right there. Yeah, he's not going to save to try to kill at zero. He's going to have to use it to end that stock and try to claw his way back in this match. Hey, but hey, another tool is another tool, and he uses it brilliantly. That is a man who knows his craft, and... Uh, let me just say, uh, he's still got a mountain to climb, but man's nice. I mean, he's already got 44%. He's drawn this close to even. The weight disparity means it's still a bit of a lead here for Seagull, but I mean, Dingus no longer really has to bang his head against the wall, and as soon as I say that, he just dash attacks the man's shield. Yeah, unfortunately, life uh, finds with plenty of little surprises. That 2D man is light, and something else might kill him, but lives another day just for now. That down smash not quite going to do it. That will go ahead and kill just about now, too. Yeah, Dingus is, he's got to come up with something special here. He just has to get in twice. Wants to go ahead and get Seagull Joe to kill percent, and then wants to get that kill. But Seagull Joe is doing such a good job of walling him out. Dingus has stage control. Again, Seagull Joe knows how to DI when he gets hit with that strain neutral. What was that, that hitbox? What? what? I think Seagull Joe threw out a forward air and got caught with it. Like, that's the only explanation, because otherwise this man just hit the, like, the hem of that lady's dress and sent her... Game three. Yo, Dingus, does your noggin have telekinesis? Because what was that? Yeah, my lord. So <laughs> I got to take the opportunity here before game three to go ahead and give some sub hype to win Callus up and with Twitch Prime. Thank you so much for supporting BGBC. Yep, that up smash was for them. 
Yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> yeah, Dinka Show, do, <laughs> do it for that so, wind callus right there. That was so bizarre. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. I, it had to have been that Seagull Joe threw out a hitbox, shifted his hurt box, and kind of just got caught with it. Otherwise, uh, Sakurai, please fix. Yeah, but hey, if you're Dingus, we take those. <laughs> True. I'll take that all the way to the bank. Yeah, it's game three now. So. Yeah, game three, winner semis. I mean, you got to take them when the opportunity presents itself, so. And Joe's, uh, Seagull's, like, DI on that was atrocious, but I do yeah. not blame him at all. He was holding, like, straight up. <laughs> Because who thinks they're going to get no hit with that? I bet even Dingus didn't realize it was going to hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it, he had to have thrown out a fair. I, I refuse to believe that Pat Lou's back air, or, or excuse me, Dingus Joe's up smash was that good. Yeah, it was just oh, pretty sus. We got to get some uh, <laughs> instant e replay on yeah, that. Yeah, ESPN uh, <laughs> live action replay of uh, what just happened. But, but game uh, three is starting really similar to a lot of the other games here where Seagull Joe is really not committing too much. So because of that, Dingus is like left to struggle. But the minute that he gets any kind of an opportunity, he gets free 30, 40 percent out of it. Yeah, yeah, little, pretty close in percentage right now. But as you said before, it is really the burden on Dingus to find that kill because he is a lightweight character and his kill options are harder and harder to get, I would say, than than Palad. I like the opportunity that, or excuse me, he's taking the opportunity to toss out those like B reverse buckets where he just kind of jumps away with it, trying to bait Seagull Joe into tossing out one of those projectiles so that he can suck it up in the bucket and fling it right back. Yeah, those that's worked out for him pretty well. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Maybe Seagull has to keep that in mind, not going as crazy with it. As you can see, he didn't really throw out anything there, just being patient, trying to wait. True. One of the strengths with Game Watch's bucket is that it is incredibly easy to two frame, especially with a uh, a teleport recovery like Palutena, for instance. All you do is you toss the bucket out and it lingers for so long that Seagull has to up B into it and then pray that he gets a tech. Or if he doesn't get the opportunity to tech, well, uh, goodbye. Oh, yeah, see, there he goes. Grabs the explosive flame in the bucket. Of course, as we said, it's not going to do a crazy amount, but might be a nice kill option. A B gets Ooh. two framed and then into the forward air, and that kills. I think Dingus could have survived that. I think he was like either DI'ing for a back air, or he just was not thinking that he was going to get hit whatsoever there. Because, yeah, I, the forward air should not have been that strong. Yeah, and you can see that Dingus is just chasing him with the turtle. I mean, hey, you like reptiles, right? Come on, give it a pet, <laughs> give it a pet, give it a pet. But uh, no dice. And then Dingus Joe just boxes his way out of the corner with that oil panic. Oh, nice. He hit, him, he hit the hitbox. He tossed down the bomb, and then in the cloud started the up smash. That's smart. Yeah, it's a uh, fun little tricks you get to pick up if you're a game and watch loyalist like Dingus is. And uh, make it a little bit hard for Seagull to keep that lead. 32% yeah. there, nice combo, and then it gets the jab, and then immediate up B, but Seagull was ready. Backed off of the punish, allowed Dingus to up B, and then just gets the up air. And full stage control. Now Dingus off stage, how does he get back? Very good up B on Dingus' side to dodge the two-frame attempt, but then immediately gets caught out with the up air. Yeah, Town and City managing to work out those high ceilings, make it a little bit better for Dingus to live from those up airs, but one more will do the trick. You cannot live for that long, my paper mache friend. Yeah, two dimensions, no weight. This man be slim. 118 already, and I think a back air, not quite from center stage will do it, but from edge, like that's, that's all she wrote. Good job by Seagull of getting out of that string there that Dingus was trying to set up. Now, how does he get down becomes the question. These up airs sharking him, and then the neutral air on platform covering just about everything. Oh, my goodness. That jump and that bomb is a nice kind of fade option. Seagull, where this are you a going? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Where are you go nice tags, but unfortunately, you're getting chased down to the ends of the earth. Yeah, Seagull got the tags and then got put in an awkward spot where he had to up be on the stage. Seagull chase it down. But no extra credit as we are down to game three, last stock. Yeah, this is where Dingus needs to pull up the nine. This is where you got it before. I'm going to need you to get that nine next time. Right now. This is the percent for it. Like 30 or so is about when it starts. About 50 is when it stops. So. Yeah, so he's opting to go for the, the safer, smarter choice of just getting damage on the board. Yeah, this is why neither of us are game watch mates. Oh my goodness, yep. but the berry. But he's living, though, center stage at that just a little bit low percentage. Down smash into oppression. Not quite going to finish it off right now, but... There into forward tilt, also not working out for Dingus, and this is terrifying now. Yes, you have the percent lead, but you're at edge against Seagull. Seagull's going to box you and keep you there as long as he can. Gets the clip of the forward air, but Seagull knows that's not true into bomb. You can just air dodge away. Yeah, this is uh, this is pretty dangerous game for these two. No one wants to commit first, as we're seeing. No, yep. That, oh, that up air just barely hitting with that tip. Neither player wants to commit to anything aggressive. Dingus Joe's up B was the first option that wasn't perfectly safe there. Look at the shields flicker. Both players trying to get some kind of a parry or something to finish this off. Anything. Yeah, there's one, but unfortunately, it is a little bit too far away to follow up with anything. 
Oh, Pegasus no. needs to stop that. He, he, you can get the neutral air and then immediately up B. He's basically firing off a kill confirm before he sees if the first hit confirms. Like that again, is, yeah, like he's see, really getting punished for that. You just have to back off, recognize that the man did not drop shield. He's betting it all again. on black. But he might be seeing red at this point because it is becoming harder and harder. He's slowly losing that percentage. Nice air dodge to get himself back. And then just running forward with shield. Please do not hit me. Dash attack not quite going to do it, but this is getting scary. Just about anything from Palo will do it here now at this percent here. Yeah, 140. This is so, so scary. He can get the win. He can get a kill, but this is looking harder and harder as Seagull Joe refuses to step forward. Seagull has to make a mistake. And he's just not going to give it to him. It looked like there. a dash attack oh right there. Oh, my goodness. He wins so hard, he destroys the TV. Damn. Immediately signal drops as the game ends, and Dinga sits there and smiles a little bit and like,